Hi, my name is Christian Walgrave, Head of Research at TK, and this is our conventional tanker market update for May 2015. Now we're now getting deep into Q2, which is usually the time of the year when we would see tanker rates start to dip seasonally. But this year, rates have stayed extremely strong right through uh, April and into May as well. In fact, in April, we saw VLCC rates actually go up by $10,000 a day to about $50,000 a day. Uh, Sewers Max stayed pretty firm at around the $40,000 per day mark. Uh, and the Aframaxes were around $35,000 per day. And this is much higher than we've seen in uh, the April-May period in previous years. It's probably the strongest market we've seen since 2008. And the fact that the tanker market has stayed strong through the winter uh, and into Q2 is a sign that the uh, increase in rates that we've seen recently isn't just event-driven or seasonal-driven. It's more due to the underlying fundamentals, which are very firm at the moment. Uh, and so those strong fundamentals are low fleet growth. Um, the tanker fleet has grown by less than 1% through the first four months of the year. And for 2015 as a whole, we think the tanker fleet will only grow by about 2%. And within that, most of the fleet growth is in the product side. And so again, we expect a shrinking uncoated Aframax fleet and a shrinking Suez Max fleet and just a small amount of growth in the VLCC fleet. So number one is the very low fleet growth. But on the demand side, I think that's where we've seen the biggest change. Um, and there's some very positive underlying fundamentals which are supporting the crude tanker trade at the moment. Firstly, global crude production is very high uh, in all parts of the world. And that's largely a result of, obviously, what's gone on in North America with shale production. And then in response to that, OPEC deciding that they are not going to cut production to support prices, but that they're going to uh, maintain production in order to support their market share. And so we've seen very high production out of places like uh, the Middle East, uh, Saudi Arabia increased their production recently to 10.3 million barrels per day, which is a record high. Uh, and we're still seeing a lot of production out of the Atlantic as well, out of West Africa and Latin America. Uh, and on the flip side, on the, on the oil demand side, what we've seen is very strong refining margins. Uh, and so we've seen an increase in refinery throughput compared to last year. We've seen some refiners deferring their maintenance into the fall or into next year to take advantage of these strong margins. And so we've seen a lot of crude demand into uh, not just Asia, but also into places like Europe, where we've seen very strong crude trade compared to prior years. Uh, and so we've seen a lot of crude movements, uh, as I say, from West Africa to Asia, but also West Africa to into Europe, and then obviously the Middle East uh, supplying Asia as well with increasing amounts of crude. Uh, and even underlying consumption, there's signs that that's starting to increase now uh, due to the lower oil prices that we've seen this year compared to prior years. So all those fundamentals are coming together to mean that we're seeing very high levels of crude trade, very low levels of fleet growth, uh, and that's what's creating the strong tanker market. And we think that's going to persist through the rest of 2015 and into 2016. Although we do expect that as we go into May and June uh, and then into Q3, we probably will see slightly lower rates than we're seeing now. Uh, and that's due to a couple of reasons. Firstly, uh, in Saudi Arabia and the Middle East, we usually see that in the summertime they keep more of the crude within the region uh, and that's for direct burning in the power stations uh, to supply electricity as cooling demand goes up in the hot summer months. And also as some of the new Saudi Arabian and Middle East refineries start to ramp up production through the next few months, we should see more of that crude as well staying in the region and just going into the refineries. So I think we will see a slight reduction in uh, the amount of crude available for exports from the Middle East in the next few months, which may have a slight negative impact on the tanker market. And I think what we also are seeing at the moment as well is the crude oil price has come up from where it was in January at $45 per barrel to now in the $65 to $70 per barrel range. And I think that's just moderating the amount of crude oil purchasing for stockpiling that we saw earlier in, on in the year. So places like China that were buying a lot of crude for their strategic stockpiles I think as the prices come up a bit, they just might take a pause and wait and see what's happening with the crude prices. So we might see a bit lower demand uh, on the stockpiling side. So that, as I say, might cause rates to dip a little bit into summer and into Q3, uh, which is when we expect to be the, the lowest point of the year for rates, but still significantly higher year on year compared to 2014. But then, as I said, because the fund underlying fundamentals are so good, we do expect that the tanker market will come back again after Q3, and we expect a very strong winter market like we saw uh, in 2014-15. And then into 2016, as we've said before, I think um, the fundamentals do start to shift a little bit. 
fleet growth goes from 2% this year to 4% next year. And there's also more uncertainty next year as to what happens with the oil price. Uh, will uh, global oil inventories continue to build or will they, uh, people start drawing down on those inventories? At which point that would be a, a bit of a negative for the crude tanker market. But we think that's more of a second half 2016 or even a 2017 event. Uh, and certainly for the remainder of this year, uh, and at least through the first part of 2016, we expect that these very strong tanker rates will persist. So that's our tanker market update for May, and we'll speak to you again next month.